I've got I've got a little mic now, and it's on a sword that doubles as a pen. So that's pretty cool. Um, hi, welcome back to Writer Mix videos. If you're new here, my name is Jess. I am an author who makes videos about the indie publishing space as I'm going through the process of publishing my debut novel, novel, <laughs> novel, The Destined Road. So. Welcome uh, if you're if you're new here and uh, yeah so I've got a new mic set up so a little I've got a little lavalier guy that's that's sitting on a little sword pen now so I feel like that that makes me a more legitimate YouTuber now uh, I also have like a light that I am kind of testing out today to see if it does anything even though I'm already pale I feel like. You know, that's why I was looking at myself. Anyway, so today I am going to talk about, well, actually, <laughs> the reason this video is out on a Wednesday today, uh, I am recording it a couple hours or a few hours before I'm actually going to like edit this and then publish it because I have decided to change my schedule as a small content creator. I feel like I can just kind of wing it a little bit as I'm figuring things out because I've never really done YouTube before. I've never done YouTube before. Um, if you've been with me as long as you have, at least in the last few videos that I've done over the, these past couple of months, uh, you know this already. But for any of you who are new and do not know this, that's why. But um, so I am thinking of changing my schedule because I originally wanted to send things out every Saturday was kind of the idea that I had for publishing. But I feel like the cadence of Wednesdays for some reason, especially for like algorithm and things like that tends to be the best day for any of the content that I produce. So that's kind of what I'm going with. So that's why it's being published today and will likely be published. Uh, any future videos will likely be published on Wednesdays going forward. Uh, that being said, today's video is about how to begin a novel. And no, this is not a step by step on how to begin a novel. This There are plenty of resources out there that do a much better job at that. If that's something that anybody wants me to actually compile and create as kind of a more serious tone video of how to begin a novel, I would be happy to do that. So if you leave a comment below and let me know that that's something that you'd be interested in me producing, I would be happy to to know that. But no, so my beginning of a novel process video is going to be vibe based. Um, it's going to be kind of the personal feel that you need when starting a novel. I've got a list here that I will go through uh, so we can get into that. Uh, so when you're thinking of where to start, um, write because you want to write. Yeah, write because you just f have this inkling that you want to put a pen to paper and you want to get out a story or a poem or an idea, I mean, anything. If you're not compelled to write, it's going to be really hard to try to be an author. I know that might seem like pretty standard advice, self-explanatory. But believe me, it's it's probably not. And I mean, the biggest the biggest at the biggest testament I have to that. It took me a while to get here. The biggest testament I have to that is the fact that I was an English major and I often had to write a lot for many different things, but I did not want to write. I, I wanted to I wanted to theory craft and read books, which I did. I did do a lot of that, but there was also a, quite a bit of writing involved and I didn't want to write at the time. So write because you want to write. Two, learn by doing. And that's kind of a lead in from my previous point. It's a lead in from my previous point. You just have to write. You have to continually write and you have to learn by writing more. And I've had a lot of experience writing-ish. I have less experience writing creative works than I do like writing reports and papers and newsletters for corporations and nonprofits. But I do have experience writing. So getting into the groove of writing and knowing kind of how a story and plot structure works came pretty naturally to me, which is helpful, but not necessary. I mean, a any author that you know, or love or like have read in the past, uh, if you know, if they have continued the craft are still learning. Next thing is to seek writing friends and a support network for your writing. It, motivation from other people, especially people who 
like have a weird um attachment to your work <laughs> my sibling is is that person for me anyone who just you know, is a really good friend and really wants you to succeed and keep moving forward and having writer friends as well. Uh, so you can share in all of the um, joys and good times. And especially the bad times. Uh, <laughs> in your writing process is going to be super helpful. I do also have a friend who is a writer who is starting uh, their novel process because I have convinced them to write a book, which is very exciting. I'm very excited for for them. Yeah, just going through and uh, commiserating is, you know, it's it's necessary and it's therapeutic, I would say. Um, fourth thing, is that four? I think that's four. Have a funky idea or just bamboozled by a name or a concept, like a creature, anything, literally anything, write it down. I know you have a notes app. I know that you've written down some weird, strange thing before that you're like, it, maybe it was a dream or something that you had and now you can't stop thinking about it. Like that's what I would just, just write down anything, literally anything. I have a, <laughs> I had a character name come to me when I was first starting this process and for the life of me, I, I had no idea what it even meant, if it was going anywhere, anything. I, I had no idea who this person was, and turns out they're kind of a side character uh, in this thing. And I, I used that name kind of more as an homage to the original idea because it's the name that kickstarted almost the entirety of my book, which seems weird that it wouldn't be more of a prominent character, but it's not. So. Yeah, uh, write down everything because you never know, like, kind of the weird things that stick in your brain and give you a sense of, I don't know, connection, purpose. I'm not sure. But it works. Uh, it works to keep everything. I know this is a beginning a novel process, so this doesn't totally apply, but it's a good thing to note uh, as you're starting to write. Any scene or things that you don't think are working and you're going to get rid of, like, don't just like save it into a separate file and maybe you'll use some detail from it later you never know i've had that happen a couple of times as i've written my book uh so it's been it's been good to kind of keep track of those things because also it's kind of a showing of look how far i've come in all of this which is great too and with that with that same kind of thing in mind anything that you think of for your novel is valid like it's your novel, it's your short story, it's your poem, it's whatever you're writing. Anything you think about it or anything you think for it is completely valid. And I know, and, and this also kind of leads into a point that I, I think I've touched on in the past, but maybe not, is that even just thinking about your novel is, I know a lot of people are like, that's not writing. But to me, I think that's writing because a lot, like all of the work is being done inside of your brain as you're going through this process. Like, to discredit the fact that maybe just thinking or scrolling on Pinterest and creating a board for your book isn't technically writing, like you're not putting words down on the page and like, yeah, that's true. But like all of the work for your book comes in those moments of finding inspiration or whatever. Like I know I've found a ton of inspiration just by listening to music for the book. Scenes that never would have really shown up had I not taken the time to create playlists. There are a couple of characters and themes that came out of finding unique images that I was like, oh, that's something that I didn't actually know was going to be in the book, but here they are. So it, it is writing. And as you begin your novel or short story or again, poem or whatever uh, you're writing, cherish those moments. I do cherish the moments that I spent just kind of sitting in theory crafting my book and sitting and listening to good instrumental fantasy music and things like that because it's brought a lot of character and it's brought a lot of inspiration to writing my novel in the first place. Um, also planning and plotting and just creating bullet points for like your plot or whatever it is that also counts as writing. Um, I don't know if anybody told, told you that it does not. Uh, I am saying that 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 is not true. Um, this next one, this next one was a bit of a toughie for me. Um, for anyone that knows me personally, and now I'm telling all of you, uh, don't focus on perfection. It's not a, it's not about perfection. Just focus on learning. Focus on trying 
and your first draft is going to suck anyway. So just keep writing it. Yeah, that was that was a really easy lesson for me to learn. Yeah, I nailed that one for like an entire year, really. Do not focus on perfection. And it's something truly like that I struggled with so hard because I wanted (laughs) I wanted the validation that like, oh, I was an English major. I should definitely know how all of this works and it should be really easy and really fun and everything should just and everything should just kind of work out. Cat was being a total weirdo. What are you doing? Okay. I was talking about perfectionism and not to be a perfectionist. Yeah. And I thought that all of my background knowledge and all of my experience was going to grant me this perfect and flawless first draft. And it it did not, which is fine. It's that's exactly what a first draft is intended to do. I was just it, it stopped. It was stopping me from progressing. And that's kind of the issue with perfectionism. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's obvious to anyone who has listened to some motivational speak about perfectionism. It really stops the process. It stops like all of the hard work that you've built up, all of the inspiration. It just kills it. Don't let it kill your story for you. Don't sit there and try to edit every single line. Oh, that's another thing that I remembered (laughs) because I started recording this video on like last week because I was set to put it down on Saturday, but that didn't happen because um, it was messing with this little mic, uh, trying to figure out how to not make as much noise with it. And I made too much noise in the last video. So instead of like screwing around with the sound, I just decided to re-record. And that's another reason why videos are now coming out on Wednesday. So uh, there's that. No, but one of the things that I remembered that I was saying in the last one is that A lot of people, especially as you're beginning a novel, will tell you, do not go back and edit. Do not do this. Do not do that. But that that was more specifically, do not go back and edit. That's the one that I wanted to focus on. Do a little bit. And I'll explain why. When I was was beginning my novel, and I mean, it's brand spanking new. You have no idea where you're going. And maybe you do. Maybe you think you do. You have an outline. I had an outline. I didn't stick to my outline very much, very well. The story changed quite a bit. Going back as you're starting, like as you start figuring things out and you're like, oh, this is like, this changes this part or like this doesn't sound quite right. Cause you're going to want to like, you're going to, I mean, whether you want to or not, like you're going to go back and you're going to read the sections that you've just written and you're just going to be like, But you're also going to be looking for like whether or not it's working for your story. At least that's that's kind of what I did. I think that's a pretty natural thing to do, a pretty natural thing to think. So as you're reading those back portions, like don't edit it to such an extreme, like don't redline it. But if there's something that's not quite working or like you need to change a weather or something like that, like people get so afraid of like, oh, I'm not supposed to touch anything. Like I'm supposed to just write, 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 write. So I get through it. And it's like, no, you can change it because otherwise it's going to throw off literally everything. And then you might even forget like the point that you wanted to change. And then it screws up your whole story. Like, so don't be afraid of editing in the beginning. Don't be afraid of editing during the first draft, but don't sit and edit like an entire section of your work to like be grammatically perfect because that's where the perfectionism will kill it. Um, Because (laughs) this leads into my next point. The red pen will be your best friend. It is the timeless, most beautiful, most intimate, eh? enemies to lovers you will ever read, experience, witness, whatever. It's The red pen is going to be your best friend, truly. You cannot be afraid of redlining your work at all. That's the part that was also pretty tough for me. But as I finished my first draft, and I know, again, this is a beginning a novel video, but I'll get to the point in a second. As I was going through my novel and as I finished my first draft, there were so many parts that I knew wholeheartedly that I was like, oh, I'm ready to fix this. Oh, this is like, this is where it gets good. Like knowing, knowing how far I went in the book and knowing how much I actually diverged from the like original plot points that I had 
and how much detail and how much information I learned just by writing the book changed so much for me. And you'll keep a log in your brain, basically. And I actually, I did write down all of the points as I thought of them of like what I wanted to change, but I didn't go back and change all of them right away because I had neared like the very end of the book. I was like already in, my book has two parts. So I was already writing part two and I was thinking back to pieces in part one and I was like, yes, this has to change. This has to change. Like, but it's going to be better if I do like all of that work in a bigger content edit now that I'm in a groove of writing and I know that I know what's going to happen there that's not going to affect the rest of the story. It's like the rest of the story is like helping to inform where things were happening in the beginning. So that might look a little different for you. It's, you know, if there's something in the beginning that you're like, oh, that has to change or like this doesn't work. This next piece that I'm writing doesn't work. Like go and change it. Like just fix it. So like in your brain, you're not just sitting there like hyper fixating on the fact that it's not totally right for where you're at in the book. The red pen will be your best friend and changing this is something that I, I've seen a lot of like resource blogs like talk about is changing the font will also help. I was writing my first draft in Times New Roman trying to be super perfect and like seeing that kind of perfectionism and trying to match the writing to it, even though like my first draft just like <laughs> Like it's a first draft. It's not meant to be this big, beautiful thing. It's not meant to look so pristine yet because it's not. It made me super hesitant to think about even changing the course that I was on with my writing and with like what I was looking to do with the story that I was also moving at just like a snail's pace. Like I wasn't going literally anywhere. I, I wrote maybe two chapters in a whole year the first time that I actually sat down and started dedicating some time to writing. And boy, did those chapters change after after I went back. But yeah, uh, I, now, I now completely write in Comic Sans. My first draft, my second draft, all of my edits are made in Comic Sans. And it works. It works a lot, actually. And it's just because it feels so much less daunting. It, it feels so much less overbearing. Like it just, it makes it feel like my manuscript is so fluid and so able to just like accept change and accept criticism and accept just being molded into something that'll finally look so gorgeous in that typeface of Times New Roman or Garamond or whatever it is. And that's, that's kind of an exciting bit too. So starting out your novel in kind of a funky font or something that makes you feel a little less intimidated by that typeface is good. Do that. That is probably the most concrete piece of advice I have portrayed in this. If you'd like more of that, please let me know in the comments. Uh, and finally, I think this is the best point, And this is kind of the whole purpose of my channel as I'm coming to find out and kind of the presence that I have on social media is that even if you just have a vibe, a thought, a song, any any speck of inspiration to write something, you should hold on to it and you should write because of it. If you don't have the perfect hook, you don't have the blurb ready for your book, you don't even have a log line ready for your book. If all you have is just some vague inkling of an idea, a random character name, for instance, it's all valid and you do not have to be bullied and intimidated into like feeling like you're not a writer because that's all you're working off of. It's perfectly fine. The, the idea that you need to come up with the hook of your story without you even knowing like where your story could potentially be headed is just so crazy to me. Like it's just so... Like it just, it doesn't work. Like it, it does not work. If I had to write the hook for my, for my first book, I, it's a little easier now to write the hook for my second one because I kind of know what's happening now and I know the characters and I know I have like a better vision for like what needs to happen now. So I know the overarching story to get into book three. But if I had to write a hook for my first book, I, I can barely write it now. Let's be honest. I, I would be lost. I would never write the book because... I would never, I literally would never know where the book would end up because the way I had it planned to end up did not happen at all. It's not even close. So yeah, don't, don't feel like you absolutely have to have a clear cut 
idea of what the book even needs to be. Don't just, just write, just write, just write a little bit. Just see it, just put, dip your toes in the water and see if you like it. Because chances are you probably will. I mean, giving yourself a chance to write, giving yourself a chance to be a part of this creative venture is is supposed to be really fun and it's supposed to be unique. And yes, it does have pain points. All art has its pain points and you're going to feel like you're not getting it some days. And especially in the beginning, especially if you've never written anything before, it's very difficult to get out of your own head and it's very difficult to even feel like you're even validated in what you're doing because there's this influx of advice that's just like, you know, telling you that you have to like fill out this 43 page questionnaire for like a character I personally did because that's who I was and that's what worked for me was diving really deeply into some of the characters that I knew but I didn't do it for all of them I did it for a couple that I definitely knew I was gonna have and I went through with that and that helped me and if that helps you that's great but be aware that it's not a requirement it's not something that you absolutely have to do in order to be a writer or like even begin your novel that's crazy and stupid and i hate it i hate i hate that advice so much uh but yeah that was today's video just kind of a chill uh letting you guys know that my video schedule is going to kind of change a little bit but hopefully not too crazy yeah and just kind of spreading some general encouragement that even if you're even if you have the tiniest little inkling of wanting to write a book like please do i mean oh no there's going to be more books in this space if I keep encouraging people to become indie authors. Oh no. Anyway, I hope this was good. Uh, if you have any like interesting ideas or topics that you'd like me to cover, or if you just want to say hello in the comments, I do get a chance to read all of them because I am a little baby creator and I would love to interact with you all. So uh, thanks so much and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>